Today, we are fixing the door that feels like it's gonna fall off the hinges when you open it. A common wear point on a lot of cars are the bushings or the pins inside the door that hold the door straight. See on this door, the guide bushings for the pins are all broken and this one's actually missing part of the bushing. They actually sell a little repair kit to fix the bushings and the pin on the door. You're gonna need two kits and the kits will run you about $9. I'll of course put links to these down in the description if you have an S10, but it looked like they had kits for other vehicles as well. And hey, big thanks to Advanced Auto Parts for partnering with me on this video. For this job, we're gonna need some basic tools the only specialty thing you might need is a door hinge spring tool in order to compress the spring inside of the door. Luckily, that tool is not terribly expensive, under $25, and of course you get to click it like tongs, so that's fun. Now, there is a very important step one to doing this job. Take both of your kits, walk them over to the freezer, and put them in the freezer as soon as you get them. Trust me, this is a worthwhile step and you'll thank me later. Right off the bat, if you wanna take the door completely off of the car, that's actually totally fine. You'll need to make sure you disconnect the wiring connectors that run through this boot. However, you don't actually have to take the door off. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my rolly chair and I'm gonna roll it up underneath the door. That's gonna support the door kind of in the middle. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our floor jack and we're just gonna lift up on the door a little bit. It's very important that you are super careful here. What works really well is a rolled up towel between the jack and the door. I'm using this little foam pad here that works really well too. You wanna gently and slowly and carefully lift up on the door. We're not trying to shove the door into the body of the truck. We're just trying to lift it up enough so that it'll hold it in place and our door isn't hanging. It's also not a bad idea to take some masking tape and tape both the fender and the door. That way you avoid any chance of scratching it. Here are our door pin kits. Now this should come with everything that you need in order to make this repair. We have four parts in each kit. We have a new pin. We have two bushings and then we have the little locking clip. The bushings are going to be an important part to pay attention to. Now for this particular application, these bushings are not the same. They have both a different outer diameter and a different inner diameter. The smaller one is about 12 and a half millimeters. The bigger one is about 13 and a half millimeters. On the outside diameter, the inside diameter of the bigger one is 9.54 millimeters, and the smaller one is 8.65 millimeters. These are different because our pin is actually two different diameters as well. There's a smaller diameter here at the tapered end, and then a little bit larger diameter here down at the end where the flat spot is. If you put the bushings in wrong, you're not gonna be able to drive your pin in all the way. So it's gonna be important to note the orientation of which way the pin is, because that'll tell you where your bushings go. The bigger bushing goes towards the flat head of the pin. Now the reason we have these in the freezer is because we're trying to get them as cold as we possibly can. That'll make installing them quite a bit easier. Let's go ahead and get started on our door pins. Now we're gonna start on the bottom here. I felt like that made it a little easier to do the bottom first, then the top, and then come back and finish the bottom. Start by spraying a little bit of lubricant on it. That should just make it coming apart a bit easier. Now on the non-flathead side of this pin, so in this case, the bottom side of this pin, there's typically a clip that holds the pin in place. We're actually missing it on this side. Normally we'd take a trim clip removal tool and pop that clip off. I'll show you how to do it on the top one. Make sure you have that door properly supported. I have the rolly chair and a floor jack with a pad holding it up. Then what we'll do, it, once that clip is out of the way, we'll take a drift and we will just tap that pin out. Now, depending on how rusted up this pin is, this could be a pretty easy thing to do or it might be a little bit challenging. Once that pin is somewhat out of those bushings, you probably can lift it right out by hand. Look at how rusted and gross that thing is. Next with our floor jack, we're going to pull up a little bit on the outside of the door. We're only doing it enough to get access to these two bushings here. You don't wanna just crank the door all the way up. You can end up breaking something or damaging the door. Just gently pull up with the floor jack until you have enough space to drive out these bushings. 
If you can't just pry it out either with a flat blade screwdriver or a trim removal tool, go ahead and either grab that punch you used or you can actually use the old pin and drive these out. You want to make sure though when you're driving it out, you're not driving and expanding the bushing. If anything, you want to come from the outside edge in and down in order to get the bushing out. There we go. That'll pop right out and you can see we broke it a little bit, but that's okay. Next, we're gonna clean this up as best uh, that you can. Next, we're gonna grab our bushings out of the freezer. This is the bigger of the two. The bigger of the two goes on the top side for our bottom door pin. Now, a couple of options. You can kind of tap it back down in like this. That's gonna be totally cool. What I actually like better is to take a bolt with a washer drop it down in. Then we're gonna take a nut with a washer on the bottom side and thread them on. This is gonna allow us to kind of make a little press and press the part together. And I've, I like this because I think it's easier to just get it all lined up correctly. Get your bushing all squared up and then go ahead and tighten your nut and bolt assembly. Go slow, make sure that it's actually pressing in reasonably straight. Now you're gonna to get to a point where the bolt is gonna get really hard or the nut's gonna get really hard to turn. Stop, when you hit that point stop, back the nut back off and take your nut and bolt out. The reason you need to do that is the bushing actually extends below where the bracket on the door is. So if you keep tightening that bolt down, you're gonna end up mushrooming out this bushing and we don't wanna do that. What we can do though, is take our punch or our drift and just tap it gently back in. So there's our top one. Let's go ahead and do our bottom one. You can see really well here how this bushing sticks up past the bracket on the door. That's why we couldn't just tighten it all the way down. We'll go ahead and drive this one out. There's our bottom one. Now that one went up. So, ah. This one was the smaller of the two, and we're gonna drive it up from the bottom. Bushing, straight out of the freezer. Bolt and washer, through the bushing, just like that. If you don't have a washer, you could probably even use these old bushings as your washer in order to drive this on. Bushing, bolt, washer up through, drop your washer on, start that nut, get everybody lined up, and go ahead and pull it through. Once that nut gets hard to tighten, stop, loosen it, take your little homemade press thingy off. This is how far we were able to drive this bushing up with that little press assembly. So from here, we can just take our punch or our drift and tap it up through. Now, the reason we wanted those cold is because it is going to make driving these in quite a bit easier. You do need to make sure though that the, the shoulder here at the top of this bushing and the bottom of the lower one is flush with the door bracket. Now, we're not gonna put the pin back in the bottom side yet. We're gonna go up to the top, do the top, and then we'll put all of our pins back in. On the tapered end of our pin, there's going to be a retaining clip that we need to remove. You can try and use something like a trim clip removal tool or maybe a flat blade screwdriver to get that off. I found if you bend it up a little bit with a flat blade screwdriver and then simply just cut it off, that works the best. We're gonna be replacing this anyway, so there's no need to try and save it. Our next step would be to remove this door spring. However, our truck actually didn't have one in it, which is kind of odd. I guess it fell out because the door pins are bad. So I'm gonna commit some continuity errors and show you how to take this off after I show you how to put it back in, but you'll never know, or you might, I don't know. Cinema Sins, go ahead and hit that ding because this one's a sin. Next, we gotta take off this helper spring right here. This is where we get to use our special tool to compress that spring. I like to make sure that the bolt that we tighten is towards the body. You wanna make sure you get the spring compressor as wide on the spring as possible so that you can get as much compression as you can. That'll make getting the spring out and back in quite a bit easier. Once you got it to where the spring moves a bit, 
go ahead and carefully rock that spring out. Now you really wanna keep it in this spring compressor. That way you know it's properly compressed and when you're ready to go back together, you can just drop the spring right back in just like that. Now with our spring out of our way and the lower pin out, it's time to address our top pin. This is where we need to make 100% sure that our door is properly supported. It's a good idea to have someone just stand here and hold the door so it doesn't get all weird and woggly on you because once we take this pin out, the only thing holding the door in is the wiring harness and we surely don't want the door to fall on the wiring harness and rip all our wires out. Let's go ahead and drive that pin out. Now our bottom one, we had to drive up from the bottom. The top one, we're gonna drive down from the top. We'll go ahead and lubricate our top pin as well. Either way, the process is exactly the same. While you're driving this down though, be mindful of your door. We don't wanna scratch the paint. You might need to adjust the tension you have on the door a little bit. That one wasn't too bad. You do wanna make sure you're paying attention to the boot, not to pull on that too hard. The pin is gonna drop back behind the boot. Now our door is completely loose. Now we need to move this door out enough to get our bushings out. So I'm gonna pull the door away from the car a little. To give us a little bit more room, I'm gonna pull the boot out of the body of the car. Now you'll notice we have the door pretty far away from the truck. So we definitely wanna make sure we're being careful here. Now driving these old bushings out on the top one here, not a big deal because they're pretty much already broken. So this should come out no problem. You can see just how broken that was. Now for the upper mount, the top one is going to be the smaller one and the bottom is gonna be the bigger one. Look at that guy, it's like half missing. Just like we did with the bottom, clean all this up. You may need to get some sandpaper or something and clean it up more than just wiping it down. Now here, our top one on the door is going to be the smaller one. We'll get our little press rig and we'll drop it in place. Now from here, you can take your old pin, set it right on top. It's got a nice flat edge and just tap that down the rest of the way. Now these should go in pretty easily. You shouldn't need to break out the biggest hammer you have in order to get those in. Just some gentle taps ought to do it. You wanna make sure you don't hit it so hard that you're bending these brackets on the door or on the body of the truck. Same thing for the lower bushing. This is going to be our bigger one and it's gonna go from the bottom up. Go ahead and tap it the rest of the way in place. Now, if for some reason you find that that hole is maybe a little bit oblong or too big for these bushings to fit nicely in here, you can take some epoxy around the outside of the bushing, go ahead and install it, let it cure before you put the door back together and before you put a pin in it. That should take up any gaps inside the bracket where the bushing maybe doesn't fit right. And now is the fun part. We're going to line the door back up. And just like that, we're actually pretty darn close. Next, it's time for what I thought was probably the trickiest part of this whole job and the part where I think you're gonna be thankful that you put your pins into the freezer. We're gonna drive the pins back up into our bushings. We'll go straight in. You may have to move the door a bit, up, down, left, right, in order to line it up. So that one's in there mostly. Let's go ahead and get the bottom one set. Go ahead and tap your pins all the way through. They should be flush where they seat. So flush here and flush up here. The top one, you may need a punch or a drift or something in order to actually tap on it. So that went right in and so did the bottom one. This is why you wanna put them in the fridge. The cold will shrink the metal and make it easier to drive into the door. And we are, uh, we're actually almost done here. The final piece on each of these pins is going to put the locking tab on. This sits on the open side of the pin just like that. But we do need to tap it down a little bit and what I found works super good for this kind of thing is a socket on an extension and you can just tap it down just like that. And the bottom side's a little bit trickier, but I found a way that works really well. If you take your clip, lay it in like this, it'll allow you to reach underneath the pin in the bottom side of the door and push it up into place. Okay, we are almost done. We gotta put our spring back in. Now, if you did this the smart way, you didn't take the spring 
out of the tool. You left it in because that's just, well, the easier way to do it. Because this is a new spring, we're gonna have to make exceptions. So get that spring all the way down in your tool. When you go to install it, you want the nut or bolt, whatever this one has, to be towards the body side of the truck. It's gonna give you a little bit more room. We're gonna compress our spring here by tightening down this nut. Get that as compressed as you can. Also, you wanna make sure when you put this tool in, you don't put it on the outside of the spring because you'll never get the spring in the car. Then between this arm right here and this little tab right there is where the spring's gonna go. Just kind of rock it into place. Once it's in, go ahead and take your ratcheting wrench, loosen the bolt, and now your spring is in. While we're here, let's go ahead and put our boot back into place. If you need to hit it with some lube, go ahead and do that. Just make sure it's in all the way. And now for the moment of truth, let's see what our door does. Oh yeah, no clunk right when you uh, open the door. You don't have to slam the door shut. How awesome is that? Also, if you taped it, make sure you take your tape off. Well, that door is fixed. No more floppiness when we open it. It's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and lubricate those door pins and everything that you just reinstalled. And of course, I will put links to everything we use down in the description. Big thanks to you guys for watching this video. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye. I, I hit a cord or something. This is as far as I can go.